Hey, good morning, people. It's Simon Giselli and the Voice of Reason. So today, let's have a look at what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to talk about the way that uh, peace is breaking out all over uh, after the election results. And I did do the video about Hamas and what I perceive is going to be going on in, in Gaza. So let's have a look at Ukraine. Um, Ukraine is one of those wars that should never have been in the first place. You know, there was a reason that the, go the, the Cold War took place. There was a reason that Russia became basically checked. Um, and a lot of the former Soviet republics um, became uh, part of NATO, essentially. So th that has created and, and produced a, a massive amount of peace for Europe, um, unlike we've ever seen. And yet, as soon as the Afghanistan withdrawal took place and America showed itself to be in a weakened state, um, Putin just went <laughs> into, uh, into Ukraine. And uh, he went in because he thought he could. And he thought that it would all be over in three days. Uh, that his troops, if they got to Kiev, um, that Zelensky would just uh, make a runner for it. And that uh, they would be able to put in a puppet government and take on Ukraine, which had been perfect uh, for Putin's plan. When you when you see what Ukraine is and, and its geographical position, it's one of the largest countries in Europe. And all of the Russian pipelines um, for, for their gas go through Ukraine uh, into Germany, which is one of their biggest um, customers. Plus, uh, Ukraine is a, is a massive uh, wheat belt. It produces a lot of the uh, lot of the wheat and a lot of the ag agriculture for the whole of Europe. So it was a very very big prize that uh, Soviet Union once had, um, and that Russia didn't. And if Putin could get this, he would achieve a lot of his his objectives. He would uh, achieve a buffer zone against NATO. Um, he would. Uh, bring Ukraine back into the Soviet fold um, and secure his pipelines and of course um, you know create a massive bread basket but it all went wrong and, and it went wrong because his advice from his generals was bad um, they'd been fighting a war since 2014 after they had annexed the Crimea um, and fighting a war in, in the Donbass which is largely Russian Okay, uh, largely ethnic Russians. So he thought they would be welcomed with open arms, that uh, Kiev would fall, uh, and therefore Ukraine would fall back into his power. Now, I, I think that he seriously underestimated the, the power of the Ukrainian people to want their own destiny. And that wouldn't have mattered at all had the West not stepped in and, and bolstered uh, the Ukrainian government um, through... The, uh, through the um, yeah the power of the of the U.S. Treasury, giving them money and and weapons, and that actually really changed things dramatically. Uh, we saw then the uh, the weakness of the Russian military, um, their their lack of uh, tactics, their lack of supply, which was the big big thing. Um, and their inability to actually fight a modern ground war against modern weaponry. Um, so they were still fighting a war uh, which probably worked uh, during the Second World War against the Germans, uh, but it's certainly not working uh, against Ukraine. So they saw in very, very quick time the destruction of a very large part of their army, uh, a large part of their military force, um, in, re in regards to tanks, armoured personnel carriers, helicopters, uh, they were unable to gain air dominance, which I found quite remarkable. So what's going to happen now? You know, we've got this impasse because America, Russia is not going to be beaten in Ukraine. Let's just get that straight. Ukraine is not going to win a war against Russia. Putin won't allow that to happen. And Russia is just far too big. So it's a war of attrition right now. You know, the, the battle lines have not changed all that much. It's almost like the First World War. Um, so they're stuck. And had the election gone in a different way, that would have just continued. Uh, the, the gravy train would have continued. Um, uh, US would have put more pressure on Europe uh, to just keep pumping in munitions. And it's just like a meat grinder until probably, you know, all of the young men would have been dead on both sides. Um, but now Trump is in the first day, first day Putin says, you know what, 
think I might want to come to the table on this. And there's a reason for that, okay? Because as we discussed in other videos, Trump is unstable in a lot of ways. And Putin just doesn't want to risk it. He doesn't want to risk the destruction of his country because he annoys Trump. And one day Trump just gets up and goes, you know what? Fuck him. Um, and, and I think that is going to be the case. Putin has, has a very grudging respect for Trump. He understands that he's a tough guy. Guess what? Because Putin's a tough guy. You know, they recognize each other. So I think what is likely to happen is that uh, Trump will get on the phone to him, if he hasn't done already, and said, you know, Vladimir, we're going to stop this shit, okay? Uh, we're not going to be paying any more money to Ukraine, but don't you think that that is going to be a, a message for you to start coming on in? Because it isn't. It's not going to work that way. I think what is going to happen is that Trump will say, right, let's do a deal. Let's do a deal. You've lost some of your country. It's called Kursk. Okay? And that is going to not help you domestically if that continues. But also, you just can't take over Ukraine. We're not going to let that happen. Yeah? So you have a choice. You either continue in this war, in, in which time at some point you will be uh, taken down by your own people. Or we can do a deal. And that deal would involve you taking the Donbass, okay? So Ukraine will give that, that up. It's Russian ethnicity anyway, okay? So they get Luhansk and Donetsk, which is actually the whole basis for the invasion in the first place, okay? The special military operation, as they called it, was to relieve the Luhansk and the Donetsk for the Russian population. So they get to get what they set out to do. That gives Putin a win. They also, Ukraine then has a bargaining chip, it's called Kursk, and then you bargain away, you say, listen, we'll give you your territory back, you give us some of our territory back, fair's fair. So they'll give Kursk back, that means that you know, Russia gets to secure its borders once more, and it means that Crimea may well go back to, um, to Ukraine. Because at the end of the day, um, Crimea can't be defended. As we've seen, Sevastopol, you know, has been evacuated largely, certainly on the military side. You know, the Black Sea feet, you know, were trying to base themselves there uh, and they've been decimated and they can't replenish uh, because the Turks won't allow them to. So I think that that is probably going to be what is going to happen. Um, obviously, a, a big problem for that is that Putin likes the Kursk Bridge. That was his one of his his great accolades uh, to join Crimea to to Russia uh, with that bridge. Now, Ukraine could actually do a real diplomatic coup on this. They could say, "Listen, we're not going to destroy the bridge." And we're going to open ties to Russia to allow you to pump your gas through the Ukraine, through our territory, and, and we'll tax it. Okay, so we'll, we'll take that, but we will secure it. Okay, we'll also feed Russia through our farms. Yeah, we'll buy your gas, you buy our grain, every, everyone's happy. But, and you can come into you, to Crimea on the holiday, you know, not a problem. But you can't bring any military in. And, and I think if they did that, you know, because there is, there is still a camaraderie between a lot of Ukrainians and Russians. I mean, they, they, they've got years and years of, of speaking pretty much the same language um, and, and being allies. So I think that that would actually give Putin his win, which he needs. It would give Europe the relief that they need. Uh, it would give Germany the relief that it needs going into the winter now, uh, and they need the gas that, that Russia can give them cheaply. Um, and it will just relieve the pressure in Europe. Now, that would then have a knock-on effect and allow Trump to say, you know what, America doesn't really need to be a part of NATO anymore, you know? Uh, because when you think of it, I mean, NATO's got 28 countries. They can look after themselves. They've got Italy, Russia, they've got Italy, France, Germany, Poland, the United Kingdom, you know, Sweden, Finland. I mean, they're a force to be reckoned with. It is it's the largest military alliance, even if you took the Americans out of it. Uh, and they could actually balance Europe without the need for you know, the big bully America uh, to be standing behind them. So I think that I think Putin would like that because he knows that fronting up against the US is, is not even a consideration. Um, but that, that would just you know, keep him in power 
Um, it would keep the balance of power in Europe uh, like it has done for pretty much 80 years. So that's what I think is likely to happen in the Ukraine. Um, and of course, what it is going to do is take away all the corruption as well. Um, because the money going into Ukraine is not necessarily just going for arms and ammunition. You know, you'd be surprised how many people are getting very, very rich, both sides, okay, the, both on the, the American side and on the Ukrainian side. So I think that is one of um, Trump's sort of secret plans as well. So that's my thoughts on that. I'll do a video on the other aspects of this shit show that we call the world, uh, Taiwan and parts of the Middle East in another video. So that's... That's all from me today, Simon Trezellian, the voice of reason, and I shall speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye now.